Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show. I'm your host, Gary Smith. And on today's show, me and Coach are going to discuss this past weekend's home victory versus the Seton Hill Griffins. We're going to look at standing schedules and more, and then also uh, preview this upcoming week's ball game at Slippery Rock. But Coach, uh, once again, a happy Monday for uh, for everybody in Vulcan Nation, and you know, uh, just a great win on Saturday night, Coach. Yeah, was really happy with the, the way we showed up. Uh, I thought our preparation was good throughout the week. Um, our guys are locked in right now. We got to continue to do that. We've got meetings here this afternoon and practice this evening. But, you know, happy with our preparation leading into that ball game, and I think it showed through our play. And you took the words right out of my mouth about preparation because that's the first question I wanted to talk to you about. You know, last week uh, we talked ad nauseum about you know the exciting win against IUP. But how tough is it um, as a coach and a coaching staff to keep everybody? Because that was an exciting win. I think everybody uh, that's a Vulcan fan was on cloud nine to about Thursday night, but. You know, you and your team don't have that luxury. You got to get right into it. But how difficult is it? You know, coming off that that emotional high um, and going into a home game that's kind of trapped between two. You know, you can schedule the the IEP and the sleeper rock games on a schedule. Yeah, I think our, our we've got a really mature team right now, and I think they're doing a good job of of understanding that it's about our week our week of preparation. And, and so our weekly schedule, we we. Coaches come in on Sunday and, and review the game film and then start next week's opponent. Uh, we give our players Sunday off, and then they come in Monday at, at 2 o'clock. And after that 2 o'clock meeting, that game's over. We drop it and move on to the next. And then we practice uh, not this time of year at 4 o'clock. So by the time we get up to the stadium at 4 o'clock, all our eggs are going into the next opponent basket, and, and we've moved on. And our kids did a really good job of dropping that. I was, I was anxious to see our preparation on Monday and Tuesday if we were still living in last week's game and we weren't, we, we moved on and started our week of preparation, and, and that's a testament to our guys. And i tell you what, uh, you, you kind of took the words out of my mouth because I thought we were going to have the Groundhog Day answer about what was going to happen. But uh, the th- other thing you touched on is your senior leadership and your, your veteran leadership. And, you know, coming into that game on Saturday, just as a fan watching it, you could tell within the first two minutes that, like you said, last week was last week. This is a different week. And uh, your team got out to a 28 nothing lead in the first quarter and kind of, Calmed everybody's nerves uh, sure. on Saturday in Vulcan Nation. Yeah, it was, it, it was a start we needed. Listen, Seton Hill is a really good football team. Uh, the, their coaching staff has done a, a tremendous job up there. Their defense creates a lot of problems. So for us to get out and score on the first possession was huge. Um, and then we get a couple turnovers. We get a pick six by Jamal Martin. Um, you know, that was the kind of the start we needed because their defense is really good. And they – play complimentary football. They run the football as good probably as, as anybody in the league. They've got a really nice offensive line and tailback. So they, they try and play ball control and really rely on their defense. And, you know, the start we got, it kind of had to get them out of their game plan. You know, as a, as a coach with five minutes left to go in the first quarter, there's you don't have a game plan for being down 28 to nothing. So I was happy with the way our kids came out and executed. And we had big plays on offense. We had a big uh, special teams play to create a turnover. Then Jamal Martin got a big play. So it was it was the start that we needed. And, you know, there were still some laws in that game that we've got to get fixed and things we've got to work on. But the way we started was good. Oh, the start was amazing. Like you said, a couple that a couple of big plays by that first drive and then two turnovers and, and basically set your offense up in short fields. And that's you know, that's a dangerous situation for uh, any defense to be contemplating with your offense with only 30 yards to go or so. Yeah, we constantly, we call it the main thing. We constantly preach turnovers, work in turnovers. We start every practice with it, and that showed up Saturday. Um, and then the offense did a good job, and what they're supposed to do is score in the red zone. You know, we got two possessions down there. We were able to, to, to convert them into touchdowns, and, and I just thought they'll – you know, again, the, the whole start was good, and, 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 but we got to continue to keep that pace. And on the defensive side, in the early first quarter, you mentioned the uh, Jamal Martin interception. But, you know, it was a great play by him. But if you look at the film a couple of times, uh, you have an outside linebacker just bearing down on the quarterback, forcing that throw. So that's an entire team interception and another defensive score for your squad. Yeah, turnovers are, right? Turnovers are about team defense. It's about putting pressure on the quarterback, trying to get him into making a bad decision. And then once, you know, Jamal gets his hands on the ball, he, he's got one thing in mind and, and did a nice job there. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's total team defense of, of doing your job and, and letting opportunities come to you. You know, we don't seek out opportunities. We, we, do the, we try and play the right technique, make the right reads, make the right keys, and then let opportunity come to you through hard work. And that opportunity and hard work has been paying off for uh, your squad this year. Undefeated, Jamal Martin will be named uh, for the third game in the row, PSAC Defensive Athlete of the Week. Um, that'll come out after we're shooting the show, so you may not have heard that yet. I got, the, got a little text this morning to, to include that in the game, so congratulations to him. But um, a, a, another phase of the game that you know, we always talk about, and uh, 
is your special teams. Uh, obviously, last week IP came up huge, but uh, a couple block kicks this week and a couple big returns to, to set up your team in great field position. Yeah, I thought special teams had a good day. It was one of the things that, that we thought we had to clean up from the previous week. There were some things in special teams that, that we weren't happy about or you know things that we had to work harder on. Uh, but I thought our kick return team did a nice job. I thought our, our punt team, Seton Hill likes to bring, bring a lot of pressure on punt. I think they did a nice job. So overall, I was pleased with the, the work of special teams, but we still got room to grow. And some stats from Saturday afternoon, or, or Saturday early evening. Guys, what would you consider that? Afternoon or early evening or dusk? You, you're the coach. You can set whatever you want. Early evening. Okay. Yeah. On early evening on Saturday, you know, uh, Noah Mitchell once again went over 300 yards, uh, 27 for 43, 339 yards, uh, five touchdowns. Uh, and then receiving Derek Lockhart and Wade Jackson combined for 17 receptions uh, and five touchdowns. And, again, uh, your offense spread it around. And a lot of, a lot of people got, you know, in the game on the pass passing uh, part of it. Yeah, I, th I thought the offensive line did a nice job protecting. Seton Hill is, is a pressure-based team. They do a lot of zone pressures, a lot of different looks. It was a it was a really good mental week of preparation through our offensive line. Our running backs did a really nice job of helping us pick up those pressures and, and Noah setting the protection. Uh, but that's what I like about our passing game right now. We're, we're spreading around. Each week you can see a different guy, you know, depending on what defenses are doing, a different guy steps up. You know, two weeks ago, the two and three weeks ago, Camp Tarrant had huge games. Uh, you know, now Jaquay gets back into, you know, earlier in the year, Jaquay had a couple hundred yard games. Now he gets back into the fold with a big game. So, like the way that Noah's spreading the ball around and, and putting it where the defense is telling him to put it, uh, but give the, give the offense line and running backs credit for, for picking up some blitzes this week. And I tell you what, if you watch the film, uh, I, I definitely say go watch uh, the game, the replay of the game on Cal or CTV Sports 1, um, because and just watch that offensive line play. It seems like on 90% of the pass plays, uh, Noah has all day just to kind of scan. And, you know, if you get somebody that has that, you know, athletic ability and, and, and mental ability, that it, he's just going to pick it apart. Yeah, kind of like the, the flip side of what we talked about on the other side is really team offense. You know, is, is everyone doing their job and, and, and doing their assignment and, and – you know, we got to continue to improve in some things. Obviously, the run game, uh, we're continuing as a work in progress. You know, the, the totals weren't great. You know, part of that was we did have a bad snap and lost, I don't know, 50 or 60 yards in the run game. That's something we've got to get corrected. But was pleased with the, the way they played, but we still got room. I don't think we've played our best football yet. And uh, that's uh, music to everybody's ears because your team is undefeated and been playing some good football. But to know that there's some more uh... – in the, in the tank is great this time of year. And one last stat I want to put out, Jamar Martin, as we mentioned, uh, will be named the PSAC West Defensive Athlete of the Week. Uh, he had four solos, seven uh, total tackles, but that big pick six. And enough talking about it. Let's look at these past weekend early evening highlights in the Cal U victory over the Seton Hill Griffins. Takes the snap, firing. To Lockhart, touchdown Vulcans. It's Derek Lockhart on the reception. Give Cal U six on the board. Received nicely by Seton Hill now. Able to get, oh, and it looks like there was a fumble there on the play. Yeah, ball came Cal U saying they have it. And Cal U's gonna recover. Two step drop, quick pass to Jackson. And it's in there for the Vulcan touchdown, Jaquay Jackson. Taking the snap, pressure, McCormick, intercepted, intercepted by Jamal Martin Jr. And it's a pick six for the Vulcan defense. Jamal Martin Jr. coming in out of nowhere. The snap, it's a bad snap. They're gonna play a fumbled snap. They're looking for the ball. Cal U saying they have it. Waiting for an official signal. And wouldn't this be something here? We got uh, And it is a down. Cal U ball as Seton Hill fumbles it. Mitchell with the snap. Firing down the middle of the field. It's caught by Lockhart, and that's a Vulcan touchdown. Derek Lockhart again gets to the back of the end zone. And Cal U's up now by four scores now. Mitchell. And he finds Jaquay Jackson wide open in the end zone for a Vulcan touchdown. It's Jaquay Jackson yet again. Mitchell taking the snap, firing the Lockhart, and he brings it in for the Cal U touchdown. Derek Lockhart yet again registers another for the board.
Back by popular demand and better than ever is late night dining in the Natalie Student Center. Join us starting Monday, October 18th at the hot spot for evening dining, Natalie Evening Eats, located on the second floor of Natalie next to Umami. Open Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. and on weekends, 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m., Natalie Evening Eats is a one-stop shop for your favorite menu items. Orders can be placed through our mobile app or at the designated Evening Eats kiosk. We can't wait to see you there. Taking the snap. Pressure, McCormick, intercepted, intercepted by Jamal Martin Jr. And it's a pick six for the Vulcan defense. Jamal Martin Jr. coming in out of nowhere. And where did we see this before, Johnny? Uh, <laughs> we talked about him last week. We coming up with a big, big play. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. And we saw just uh, right before this the play of the week, which was the Jamal Martin interception, uh, pick six. Uh, and again, Coach, anytime you see uh, your cornerback running unaccosted to the end zone is a great thing. But once again, you know, like I said, the, the, the play, big play, interception, defense pressure. But once again, uh, interception happened. You guys are looking for blocks. Yeah, that's something we really work on is, is during our, our takeaway period. And our defensive staff does a great job of, of our guys understanding how to, how, to, how to block and how to transition to, to be an offensive player right there. Blocking is something we work with on our entire team every Wednesday. Um, we come out and we start practice with everyone learning how to block from quarterbacks to defensive backs to defensive line. So I think that helps us down the road. And now we're going to switch over to Coach's favorite time of the show, and that's going to be graphics and, uh, and scores. So we're going to have him uh, look away from the screen for a little bit. We're going to look at the scores from this past weekend's action in the PSAC. Uh, Slippery Rock uh, got the big win over Gannon, 63-21. Uh, staying in the West, Mercyhurst over Clarion, 38-20. to um, Seton Hill, of course, Cal U, 42-14. We won 42-14. Uh, uh, and then uh, the big upset win in the PSAC was IP falling at home uh, to Edinburgh, uh, 21 to 17, and that will affect the standings in the PSAC. Uh, Coach, uh, no, you, you know you never like to see standings, never like to hear standings, but for the fans, you know Caillou undefeated in first place in the PSAC West, uh, right behind them, Slippy Rock, um, and looking over at the PSAC East, Kutztown has clinched uh, a spot in the uh, PSAC title game with a six and zero. Uh, over our conference record, an eight and one overall record. But coach, uh, that's a good segue to go into uh, this upcoming week's uh, opponent, Slippery Rock. This is a game that you know, as I mentioned in the first half of the show, you can circle the IP game, you can circle the Slippery Rock game because they're rivalry games, and also uh, you can bet that there's going to be a lot on the table. But um, first off, uh, I know you've seen a little bit of film, probably sure. well, more than a little bit of film on Slippery Rock at this point. Um, what do they do offensively? Uh, uh, to, to be successful. Yeah, really explosive offense. They, they're, they're more of a spread team. Uh, you know, they've got quality wide receivers. Uh, they, they throw the ball around. I think they're averaging 48 points a game. Or, or I may be wrong. Somewhere in the 40s. Uh, and they're only giving up 16 points a game. So they're, they're an explosive offense. They will run it, but they throw it around two, two three really good Excuse me, receivers. Uh, just a really explosive offense, well balanced. Uh, you know, they're going they're going to take their shots deep. They're going to throw bubble passes. They, they're they're really an explosive offense, and, and we're going to have to be at our best this week. And on the defensive side, you know, obviously a team with that record is going to have a good uh, defensive mindset. But uh, scheme wise, what do they do? Yeah, they're they're a base four down front team. Uh, they've got two really good cover corners. Their linebackers are active and strong. They got two defensive ends. They're really good. They're big inside. They got a really big D tackle. I mean, they are a, an aggressive bunch. Uh, they'll mix up their coverages. They'll play some man coverage. They'll roll to the zone. They'll bring pressure. They'll bring zone pressure. Uh, just a well coached football team that that obviously is the defending champs of this league. Uh, and they're nine and one right now for a reason. They're, they're extremely well coached, balanced football team, good on both sides and really explosive in special teams. And not only that, they're, you know, they're a great team, but also they're a very, very good team at home. And, and a road game that you have this coming weekend, um, you know, we talked a little bit at the beginning of the show about preparation and, and, and leadership. And that's gotta be times two or times three going into a game like this. Cause this is a basically, Winner goes to the PSAC title game. Yeah, and uh, you know our guys. I don't think I'll need to 
motivate a lot this week. I think our guys will understand what's on the line, but it's about our preparation. I talked to our guys after the game and said, okay, you've put yourself in a position to play meaningful football into November. Um, it's about our preparation. It doesn't change from week one to week 10. It's, it's about how we practice, how we prepare, and, and ultimately how we go up and, and, and come out of the locker room. And I tell you what, this Saturday's game will be a heck of an afternoon, so make sure to come on up to uh, Slippery Rock this Saturday up I-79. As Coach and I talked about last week's show, having that great fan support on the road just adds so much more um, because, like you said, this is a big game. It's, it's, you know, the winner goes to the PSAC title game. There'll be probably implications of the regional rankings, which we'll look at in a second. But, Coach, what's your appeal to get the fans up there? Yeah, I think Other that, than just being listen, a Vulcan fan. I think Vulcan Nation's going to show up. I've talked to a lot of alumni that are planning on making the trip. I know our families will be there in full force, but we need you. You know, if you're in the Pittsburgh region, you're, you know, come up and, let, and let's turn that place to red and black and, and, and get on our side and, and let's have a great day for Cal U football. I tell you what, I have a feeling that you're right because, you know, when we set up for the game, we have a little bit of time to go back and forth. So I, I get a chance to talk to some of the parents and the fans, and they're always like, or we're going to see you next week and to see you next week. Can't wait to see everybody on the road. And, you know, like you said, that just gives you uh, just a little bit more um, Absolutely. energy. Absolutely. What, what we need is we need everyone to bring a couple friends, right? If you're, if you're a Cal U fan and you're coming to the game, grab a couple friends, hand them a red and black T-shirt, and let's go up to Slippery Rock and have a good afternoon. I love it. So uh, bring a friend to Slippery Rock and uh, fill the, uh, the visiting sidelines because uh, it's going to be a heck of an afternoon. But, Coach, before we put a bow on it, we, uh, since, you know, we have to say about everything, you know, the regional rankings came out this past sure. week, um, and Cal U was slated number four in the initial regional rankings. And, obviously, you know, there's still a couple weeks in the regular season. It's kind of meaningless to figure out where teams are going to be. But the big takeaways, uh, all but one team won in the top ten. But, um, you know, like you said a couple minutes ago, you've, you've, your team has done what you can to get in this position. It's just basically – one week at a time. Yeah, we can we concern ourselves with re regional rankings after the the regular season is when we'll we'll take a look at that. We don't talk about it as a team. It doesn't have any bearing on how we prepare. Um, we're going to go out and prepare the same way we have the first first nine weeks, and uh, you know see what happens on Saturday. But you know it's nice to be there. Our guys have put themselves in a position to be considered in the region, and, and we got to continue to be deserving and working, and, and you know all that stuff will sort out at the end of end of the regular season. And if you had on your bingo card, bingo card for today, Coach was going to talk 35 seconds on the regional rankings, you would have won a free coffee from somewhere because I, was, I already had my second question, yeah. but you covered everything. Yeah. Uh, but finally, you know, like Coach said, come on up to uh, Slippery Rock this Saturday. It's going to be a, a well of a football game. We've got two really good regional teams uh, out playing for, for a lot on the line. And, you know, Coach said bring a friend. I say bring two friends, bring three friends. It's an easy trip. Um, but if you can't make it, if you have a legit excuse, you I don't can't think make it. Excuses this week. Coach isn't signing excuses <laughs> this week, but just in case you can't get to him and get the excuse signed, CUTV and WCA will have you covered. Uh, the game will be live on CUTV Sports One. Uh, it'll also be live on our portal on the PSAC network, and also uh, the radio station 91.9 FM WCAL will have uh, the action as well. So, Coach. Um, Another great Monday afternoon, yep. or Monday morning after, geez, I, you got me, I asked you what time of the day right. the game was. You got me all messed up, but uh, uh, good luck this weekend. We'll see you on the road at Slippery Rock, and, and once again, just any last words? Yeah, pr appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the coverage you guys give us, and as we close out our, our home, home regular season schedule, just want to thank everybody from the cheerleaders to the band to the athletic administration uh, for all that they do every year for, for Vulcan football to our administration in general. It takes a lot to be – you know, a, a top-notch quality football program and the support that we get here at Cal U is phenomenal from the, the coverage you all give us to the Cal Times to the cheerleaders, the band. It's, it's, it's really a family. And then I've got to thank my wife and daughter. They, they are the ultimate coaches family. Uh, they host the tailgate every week for our alumni and, and the things that they do. Just, just the support we get around here is phenomenal, and, and we appreciate all of it. Well, I speak your daughter. I, I just assume she's running the the the, uh, the, the bleachers up there where we are because every time we come up, she's putting people in position. You know, telling people where to sit. A little superstitious <laughs> that one. She wants to make sure everyone's sitting in the right spot. So, now we just appreciate all the support that we get from from everybody on campus. And you know, let's let's move this place up a little bit up seventy nine, and, and let's pack that place this weekend. And I have nothing more to add. I hope to see a lot of red and black in the stands on Saturday and uh, root on the Vulcans against Slippery Rock. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show.